I can feel you looking at me. Stop looking at me. Stop looking at me! This is my part of the waiting room. And if you can't keep your eyes to yourself, I would appreciate it if you would move somewhere else. And I don't mean to be rude about it, but the fact that you don't know your eyes give off death rates is not my problem! Good. Fucker. Fucking fucker. Another one trying to incinerate me. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, I, I can feel it. I can feel it. God. Rain of blood. Rain of clots and corpuscles. Always coming down on me from the north. The chilly ancient north. Where the rain never stops. And the days alternate the rain. Rain of blood. Rain of toads and hamsters. Rain of... Rain. Okay, then. Never eat the mothballs. And watch the things they put in pill bottles. One stuck to my tongue one time, thought I would never let it go. Stuck to it like they say those kids sometimes get when they put their tongue on a piece of frozen pipe or wrought iron or just the ass of a big ass woman. <laughs> ass. <laughs> ass! <laughs> Here's the thing. Since you asked, the thing is, well, um, it's really all wrapped up in my desire to see forward far enough so that wearing becomes a thing of the past, which sounds like a joke, I think, but I'm not fucking around here! Pardon A's, my friend K's. I will elucidate for you now. Hold your breath. Here's the thing. You get born. You grow up. You have expectations. You see a birthday coming in. You think you'd like to have a chemistry set. So, what if two things happen? You get it, or you don't. You get it, you can run around the house going kaboom, making stink bones. You don't get it. Well, you tell yourself that totally sucks, but you try to move on. You get a little bit older. You think maybe you'd like to have a car. So you suggest, you hint around, you imply, you re-imply. Then one of two things happen. You get it, or you don't. So, by the time you've been around a decent number of years, say 25, which is me, by this time you have another birthday coming up and you're way past asking your parental units for anything because they're on this little death conveyor and could give a rosy red rectum of a shit about any of it. And well, you think to yourself, there's this girl, this girl of a girl and me. And you think to yourself, well, we're getting along, so let's get married. So, one of two things happen. And this is what you, not me, you are thinking. Because actually in this scenario, a whole fuckload of things could happen. And they more or less do. Whoa! See, uh, I met this woman, artist type, Gail, little tiny woman, but with the type of eat God, eat power that can make you have a shit your spleener.
PPR for six months. <laughs> kind of person can do whatever she wants. Well, some people like me are still stealing smokes by the barn and looking at those magazines. She volunteered, volunteered to join the Red Cross to go to Afghanistan because she said, and I freaking quote, because I wanted to see what was going on for myself. Came back without a scratch, of course. Me, I'd be like one of those Mexican cutout things if I went over there. Thank something or whatever addendum for my what they call condition. Like, honk honk, who cares? Anyway, um, she came back, we met, fell into a blistering pit, you know, charnel house, a carnal infusion. And well, glorious as it was, I'm in. So, uh, oh! <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so we were all around, and she was making art, and I was using up oxygen. But I, I did like to exhale on the plants and stuff, you know, let them have my carbon dioxide, fair trade. And finally one day I say to her, Gail, let's get married. And she was like, art, art, art. Which is, yes, of course. Art equals yes, that's obvious. So she took me to meet this, um, guy she knew, uh, Diego, jewelry designer, amazing stuff, showed us this uh, entire table setting that he made by hand and explained how he knew from making a fork that it has to have the curve in it that it does because if you were to just make it straight, the only way you'd be able to pick anything up is if you were to stab it and that's for sure not a way to eat. And stab, stab, stab! It'd be fucking tedious. Um, anyway, so we, um, we talked up some designs and all for the rings, and he started making sketches, and we said, okay, we'll call you. And he said, okay, I'll answer when you call. Which I think meant yes. So, uh, so time went by. Maybe. I don't know. A person can forget their meds kind of often. Anyway, way, uh, <laughs> um, finally, one day we were at this uh, one place doing laundry. And, and what I do wonder is, is who is that guy, Matt, that owns all those places like that? Laundry Matt. Anyway, um, uh, finally, I said to her, Gail, we need to order the rings. And she was, like, reluctant, saying, art, art, art. It was like, uh, her eyes were pulling me out of myself. Like, I was so naked, I could not get a penny back. And she, she said, uh, you need to get back to seeing Stanley at Sandcliffe. And I was like, no. No. That is not... The subject, the topic for today is we are going to call. So I call the guy and he answers and I hand the phone to her and her eyes fell away from my face and out of her head and died on the floor. And she said, forget it and hung up. And then a lot of things happened, and she eventually left because I called her name and showed her my fist. And she left, and then the rain started coming all the time, and I'm here. Waiting for Stanley, and then group, and then meds, and then day room TV for one hour only. Please do not smoke in the day room, and do not ask to change the channel, and then sleeping meds, and then nothing, 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 and then breakfast, and then morning meds, and then smiling, how are you? God! Fucking rain, fucking rain, motherfucking fucking bitch farting rain.